Hey, I'm Anfa. I'm an electronic music producer and sound designer, but I only use open source software and Linux. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a sound effect that you like, how you can analyze its features, and then recreate something similar with a synthesizer. This could apply to many different sounds. In this example, today I'm going to synthesize a sound of a bullet shell casing bouncing off the ground. But this could also work for bells or other metallic sounds. It is very fitting for metallic sounds because we're going to analyze the sounds to find specific partials, that is, metallic resonances that we're going to dial in to recreate the sound. Let's get to it. All right, so the first thing is you need to find your reference. I was looking for a sound of a bouncing shell casing on Freesound, and well, I found exactly that, bouncing shell casings, various sizes. This sound is licensed under Creative Commons Zero, so I could use it if I wanted to, and I didn't even have to credit the author, so it's always appreciated. But I've downloaded the sound and picked a specific part that I really like. Let me play it to you. So you can hear there's actually two things going on. One thing is we have this very nice sound of a brass shell hitting the ground. But there's also something else which we don't like. Something like a plasticky impact sound. So I want to cut that off because it's going to confuse our analysis. Let's listen to this. Okay, maybe we could analyze just this part. So I'm going to right click, select the name of the region and go Spectral Analysis. And what we have here is the overall spectrum of this selected region. So what we see here is that um, there is pretty much nothing below 500 Hertz. And then we have a peak at 1.5 kilohertz, another peak at 4.4, a little bit of stuff going on here. And then we have a bunch of peaks at almost 10 kilohertz, so 9.8 kilohertz, a little less, but still a lot of 13.2, 15.6, and a bit of peaks at 20 kilohertz, almost 20 kilohertz. So this is the information we need to recreate the tone of the sound, the spectral makeup. This is the, a cross section of our sound. And I'm going to use this reference to synthesize a tone that will sound like this. So I have a synthesizer here, Vitalium. Let's open it up. I have it routed to my keyboard so that I can play it. And right now it plays a default sort of wave. So because tuning of these partials are going to be extremely important, I am going to now disable key tracking for this oscillator. So I'm going to go to advanced and uncheck note track. This means it doesn't matter what key I press, the oscillator will always play the same pitch. What I'm going to also normalize this by pressing Alt and 3. All right, so we need a spectrum analyzer as well to like see what we're doing. And there is a couple of spectrum analyzers in Vitalium itself. We can click here and have a spectrum analyzer, but it doesn't tell us what the frequencies we're hovering over are. We can also look in here. But again, this is pretty minimalistic, and of course we can like we can tell what's going on by looking at these lines, and this is going to be a hundred hertz, a thousand hertz, ten thousand hertz, and twenty thousand hertz here. So we could find our way in here. It's going to be a bit difficult because this is not too big. So I am going to open another plugin, which is going to be our analyzer. I think I'm going to make the window of Vitalium smaller. So we can fit it all in one screen and just have our reference, have our synthesizer and have our analyzer. So I'm going to open another plugin. I don't want to do that. 
Okay. A plugin I often use is called High Sam, which is, I believe it means high resolution spectrum analyzer something. And apart from this face in the corner, which I can't get rid of, it's a really nice plugin. Also, apart from the fact that I can't resize it just like I would. Okay, I'm gonna, I can actually clip this a little bit because we're not going to need as much stuff. So now what we want to do is match the spectrum on the top with the spectrum on the bottom. Simple, right? This is what we're starting with. All right. Uh -huh. um, okay, so my idea is we can use the wavetable oscillator because it has we can edit the harmonics content. So if I right click here and press clear, we can insert individual partials, actually harmonics, because this is a harmonic series. But if we play this note low enough, our harmonics are actually gonna reach the stage where they're like so close together, you can't really tell they're a harmonic series. So they will sound like inharmonic partials and this way we can like mimic what we have here. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to shift this oscillator all the way down to negative 48. And now you can see what we're playing. Our, our basic tone is somewhere around 20 hertz, which is like, you know, below at the limit of human hearing. And all the other stuff is here. I'm going to, I'm going to clear and I'm going to put one and see where it is. Okay, that's around 1.4 kilohertz. What we need, we need 1.56. That's pretty close. Let's try another one. 1.56, 1. 1.4. Okay, a little bit too little, a little bit too low again. Still a bit too low. 1.56, my goodness. Okay, not, no, not exactly. This is close enough. So this is one thing. Yeah. No, Okay, 1.6 1. 1. can be can be okay. You can see there is a little bit of harmonic distortion right here. These partials are um, not something I intentionally put here, but they are a result of aliasing probably. We could get rid of that if we go to advanced and up the oversampling. Unless that's going to uh, freeze the entire thing or crash harder, in which case uh, you would be better off not doing that. All right, turning on uh, oversampling didn't end well. Let's try this again, though. All right. Didn't help. Didn't help either. What if we enable high res wavetable? No. Okay, so this little bit of distortion is gonna keep stay there. So we have one partial. Okay, this is not not high enough. I'm gonna also clear the face faces. Uh, I'm going to put another one here and see. One, four, six. One, okay, we need one, five, four. Let's try this one. One, five, five. That's good enough. Okay, another one is four, four, four. So 444. Okay, that's too low. I'm going to zoom out this series. Let's see. Oh, we have we have some aliasing. Okay, this is kind of. I think the wave table resolution is breaking down at this point. I think we need to play this a little higher. Okay, two octaves higher. Let's try it. Let's try it again. So start with 1.5. This is free, so no. Kind of in the middle. Yep, 1.5. Then 4.8. That is 9.3. So that's going to be almost good for this thing. Yeah, good enough. Uh, 4. Point whatever. It's going to be. 
four and a half. Okay, we can also add a bunch of other harmonics here. Because there's a bunch of more. You can also add a bunch of there. Just paint some, draw some sound in there. All right, and then this 13. Oh, that's a 13, okay, and then 16. Oh, close enough. And a 20. Yeah, kind of. You can also insert a little bit of uh, stuff here and there. Okay, that's kind of like our spectrum. Uh, now this is just like the, the basic tone. So what we need to do is turn this into a patch. So I'm going to hide this these analyzers and I'm going to make our synthesizer larger because now we need to figure out how to actually turn this into a pl plausible sound because this is like the, the raw harmonic makeup of the sound and not the sound itself. Okay, so what do we need? Um, try and use a low pass. How about high pass? Okay. Now, first thing, the sound we're making clearly decays and also I think that our sounds um, let me use another analyzer plugin wolf spectrum it's funny it seems like the high frequencies are like staying longer so low frequencies are decaying and the high frequencies are staying longer and we can also s emulate that with this uh, just by altering our wavetable we have one first uh, state of our wavetable and have another state of our wavetable where I lower the low frequencies, the high frequencies a little bit too, but we leave the like the the most important tone in there. So now, okay, all right. So uh, let's take a look at the amplitude envelope. First thing is it's uh, it has sustain. We don't want sustain. This has to be a percussive sound. All right. Second thing, we have a little bit of attack by default. Let's turn this into zero. Okay. We can also change this phase randomization to zero so that we have a very consistent transient. You can hear there's a little click now. But, but with randomization, sometimes there is this click, sometimes there isn't. And this way, our hits are going to be consistent, which is going to be easier. Let's also move to the first frame of our waveform. Second thing, this sound is obviously too long. We can make this decay sh shaped a little bit differently. And another thing, we want to change the position of the wavetable along with this thing. So I'm going to drag this up here. And you can see that it's the wrong way. We actually want to make this wavetable start in the low position and go to the high position later. OK, but it's decaying a bit too fast. I um, I would like to make this slower, but I don't want to alter this wavetable. So I'm going to go to the matrix, modulation matrix. Yeah. And you see we have our assignment here. Envelope one is driving oscillator one waveframe. And here is the morph thing. So we can bend this uh, envelopes function that's going to actually be influencing it. So now we have a little bit more 
of that of that low frequencies. We can also switch back and um, mute this to see what it makes. Okay, now I think we need a percussive click because there's obviously a click in here. And also I think we have a very prominent harmonic here which should not be as prominent. Or maybe it's a different one. This one? Yeah. Yep. That's better. So uh, also let's have a little bit of noise. And I want to use another envelope. Or actually no, we can use the same one. Let's drag it into level. I want to have a little bit of white noise just at the very start of the sound. So I'm going to make the level all the way down and have this envelope trigger it. But this is way too long. So I'm going to go to modulation matrix again and use this thing in the opposite direction. To squeeze this envelope so that it it's even shorter, right? So our, our morph function here is bending this envelope down. So there's very little, so there's very little body to it. Well, I can hear the effect of that. Actually, we could have a little bit of noise residue. And I'd also like to use a filter for this noise. So let's enable filter one. I'm going to root sampler to it. Disable oscillator one. Don't want to root it to filter. And I'm going to make this a high pass. Maybe distort it. There is like I think there is a tiny bit of something like this lower frequency tone that is um, on there on the very beginning. Okay, I think what we can do next is like try to maybe um, sprinkle some stuff on top of the sound to shape it better. So we could add a little bit of reverb to it and remove lows. Maybe let's make it all wet. Remove size, make size small, time as low. Okay, so that's very, let's disable chorus. Oh, nice. We have this tiny, tiny resonance. Okay. Let's see what compressor will do. Oh. Something we don't want, which is uh, make it all sustained. We could also try and play a little bit with uh, something like a phaser, but in a static mode. So disable depth or set depth to zero. So it's not moving So this is like adding additional peaks, frequency peaks to our to our sound. We can also try a comb filter. 
maybe let's put it after this thing. Now, right now it's low pass. What you could also do is use this envelope to affect the frequency. <laughs> so that we remove the low frequencies even more. Oh, I like that. That's pretty nice. Mm. What if we make this oscillator quieter? We can also play with tuning. And we have EQ which we can use to like apply some final frequency balance tweaks. And we can also see our um, spectrum in here. The cool thing about this shell filter is that we can do something like this. Nice, we're boosting this little harmonic there. What else can we do? I mean, we can use this shell filter as another peak. Okay, I think not. At least not to such a degree. Without, with. Okay, is this close to our re res reference? Not at all, might. It's way too long, that's for sure. So I'm going to reduce the decay sound. Decay time. And also the frequency of our harmonic is wrong. If we could pause it, that would be fantastic. Or actually, I can just uh, sustain this. Whoa, okay. Ah, so this is 1.5. 1.5, okay. 4.4, what is this? 4.6. Could this be the difference? 200 hertz in there, that makes it sound so different. Let's try. I'm going to open up this editor and find that particle, partial, sorry. I think it's this one. Uh, so we have, okay, 4.5. We're on 4.4. I'm going to leave my cursor at 4.4. Oh my goodness, it's like between one pixel. Okay, so you see, <laughs> I've quicked my cursor and... Oh, okay, it shows 4.4 with this vertical line. Cool, now I can see what this is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, I think I hit it. Wow, all right. Let's listen again. I think it is a little bit closer, but still not perfect. So this is 4.4 .4 and this is 4. Point oh, it's still 4.6. I think I moved the wrong partial. What the hell? Or did I move it at all? No, it was it was the one, okay. I think I just didn't move it enough. 4.45, now that should be similar. Okay, 10.0, 10 this is pretty much 10 kilohertz. Is this 10 kilohertz? No, it's 9 point something, that's a problem then. Uh, what is this? That's more like it. And this 13. It's 
pretty much okay. 15.6, 15.2. Okay, the problem is our second um, frame is going to now be different. Uh, could enter another one here and just do what we did there. Instead, delete this one. And also do this. All right, let's remove sustain. Still very different. <laughs> All right, I think um, it's going to do for her though. And there is way too much reverb now, I can hear it. I think we could enable velocity tracking. And now, maybe make this whole thing a little bit louder. I uh, don't think there is an easy way to make it all louder. Okay. And I'm going to try and insert a bunch of notes so that to simulate this uh, shell bouncing. So it's going to be longer and shorter so long and loud short shorter and quieter and shorter and quieter still <laughs> okay that's too short uh that's too fast i'm gonna stretch this time stretch this Uh, still too short. Okay, I think this is not long enough. And this is too short. So we have like the change in length to wrap it. Alrighty, so that is our synthesized shell casing impact. This is by no means perfect, but I wanted to demonstrate to you this idea of analyzing a sound, um, checking out its harmonic makeup, its frequency content, and trying to reproduce that with a synthesizer to achieve a similar sound. And it works, more or less. I'm going to actually show you a shell casing sound I made before using exactly this method. And this is the one. So you can see, or here it's a bit different than this one we have. I also based it on a different sample. I think it. Which one did I use as a reference? Maybe one with a little longer, with a bit lower sound. I don't know. But yeah. Um, of course, this takes a lot of skill and uh, a lot of practice, but you can still get some interesting results. And uh, well, if I tried, I've tried before to make this sound by ear and it didn't work at all. And when I actually find a reference sound, loaded it up and uh, used spectrum analysis to reference what the what the partials, what the frequency peaks in the original sound are, where they are, and also use the, the spectrum analyzer to make sure I'm putting these frequency peaks where I need to put them, then the sound became actually usable. And I can play it to you in context, actually, because this was a sound I made for a little game I'm working on with a friend. And if you watched my recent live stream, you may have seen us um, playing the game. And I'm worth making some other sound effects for the game on the live stream. So 
let me quickly start a game and I'm gonna play this sound to you along along with other sounds we've made during the live stream the game sound didn't record at that time so I'm re-recording this gameplay for you oh and you can check out this game at github.com slash anfa slash liblast and if you know Godot and want to help out, make this uh, game <laughs> more fun to play online, then uh, feel free to do so. Shameless plug. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was interesting and has given you some ideas for how you can make sounds with synthesizers. And also maybe I've shown you some interesting things you didn't know about Vitalium, which is a super powerful <laughs> wavetable synthesizer. Uh, it's an open source version of Vital. Vital source code was released, uh, but the community has made like a fork and renamed it to Vitalium to avoid any confusion. And I'm using this fork because I'm all about free and open source software. Yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you would like to learn more about um, how to use Linux for music production or get help with some issues you're having, uh, please join my community chat at chat.unfound.xyz. Uh, there's a bunch of very helpful people there uh, who are sharing ideas and helping each other out. And we're having a great time in there. Also, I want to thank all the people who are supporting my work financially. Uh, these are people on Patreon and LiberaPay. And I would like to encourage you, if you find my videos uh, helpful, to consider joining them. Yeah, uh, that's all for today. Now go and make some sound effects. <sighs> Yay, we made it. Just a few software crashes along the way, but we made it.